climate changes, water shortages, higher oil prices, crop diseases, and a rapidly expanding population. These are all factors that's making it more of a challenge to feed the world. In the next decade, global food supply must increase by 20% to feed the planet. It's predicted that food prices could increase to new peaks, and that could lead to widespread social unrest seen in the Arab Spring. With just 11% of the planet's land surface suitable for agriculture, precious farmland is in danger of disappearing. We need to protect our irrigable lands, and uh, our irrigable lands are uh, shrinking. We have a billion new people, or uh, two billion new people in the next 40 years. We've got to protect these irrigable lands. Yeah, and there's just not much room to grow uh, uh, anymore, and so what we really have to do is increase the, the efficiency with which we use the limited land and water resources and so forth going to agriculture to, to bump up production going forward. Genetically modified seeds are helping to produce higher yields more resistant to diseases. But the problem is not so much a lack of food, but getting the bounty to where it's needed. At Tel Aviv's Agro Mashov, the self-proclaimed World Cup of Agricultural Fairs, the theme this year was on marketing food. The emphasis of this exhibition is the marketing of produce. We believe that one of the solutions for a shortage of food is the transportation of food from one place to another around the world. We all know there are places that have abundance and places that have shortages. Agricultural production is not keeping up with population growth. It's estimated that by the year 2030, another 1.8 billion people will be existing on Earth, and that's a lot of mouths to feed. We have accumulated a lot of knowledge and we will be happy to share it with other countries. I've set up a team that will examine what we can do to deal with the food crisis, and I'm talking about 40 years from now, the long range. On the short term, we have what we have, but in the long term, I'm thinking of the next generations. With shortages of arable land, many Arab Gulf countries, like Qatar, have been buying up fertile lands in Africa to serve as their breadbasket. This land grab has raised alarms by these countries, who fear they won't be left with any food to feed their own people. An international conference on food security held at Tel Aviv University tackled this issue. There's a good part of it that's putting a lot of investment in Africa, and one of their big problems is money to buy the food. Um, if it would ever be taking the food out of Africa for Qatar and so that it's not getting local people, that's a major problem. Actually, it's not a lack of food, but a lack of nutritional food. In Africa, there's some places where there's like, you know, people suffer from, from hunger. There's really not enough food in quantity. But in much of the world, there's, not, there's enough food in quantity to fill your stomach, but there's not enough nutrition. I think it's the key issue. If we don't deal with this issue of food availability, food security from every point of view and actually bring the economists and the historians and the policymakers with, together with the biologists, we're being irresponsible. There was a great story about making a mouse that can live longer and that we can actually make you know, people potentially live longer with new medicines. What is that going to do if we don't have any food? From Tel Aviv, this is Arieh O'Sullivan reporting for the Media Line.